Okay, so I'm going to tell you this story. Once upon a time in Cork City, most of the people, they were happy with what they had. They were going through a difficult time, just like it is at the moment. It was a world war, World War II to be exact. And during that war, they even had a pet name for it. It was called the emergency. And there was a lot of wisdom about it. Um, during that time, there lived a family up in Gronabraher, and there was a beautiful girl. Her name was Jenny, and Jenny was beautiful inside and out. She had a ready smile, and the thing that made her really beautiful was the twinkle in her eye when she'd be talking to you. She made you feel that you were the only person in the whole world. And Jenny's mother, she relied on her a lot because there was nine children in the family and Jenny was about third down. It came to the time when her sister was to be married and Jenny was sent into the centre of Cork City to pick up some bits and bobs that her mother needed for the wedding. And all of the, of the women in the coal cay, all of the traders with their black shawls, they were like, Jenny, Jenny Murphy, come over here. You're good, handsome Jenny Murphy. Let me sell something to you. And then for the rest of the day, the trade will come tumbling in. Everybody has a little thing that they'd rather not the world know about. And Jenny's was that she really liked beautiful jewellery. She took to, to walking into town by going down Patrick Street past T.L. Egan's shop. And in the window was a beautiful little bauble. It was a black opal. Oh, it sparkled and shined. And Jenny would set herself up in front of the window so that her reflection would look as if she was wearing the bauble itself. Well, all the people inside in that jewellery shop, when they'd be looking out, they would think to themselves, how beautiful it looks around her young neck. Wouldn't it be great now if we could sell it to her? But sure, that's not the way of the world. One day, Jenny was passing the window. and She looked in. There was the black opal gone. Oh, no. She had a lovely pleasure in looking at that every day. And now it wasn't there to be looked at anymore. The old people of Cork. They would cross their arms and they would say, that's covetousness, girl. You have to be very careful of covetousness. It gets hold of you. Jenny walked down Patrick Street and as she came to Dawn Square, turning right into the cold cave itself, there was a woman there with a shawl around her, a woman that she had never known before. Hello, Lanov, and how are you today? Come here, my pretty. She was about to walk past her, but when she looked, she saw something flashing. And quick as a flash, the woman took it out of her shawl, a black opal. Jenny couldn't believe her eyes. They were out on stalks. Oh my goodness, she says, and how did you come back by that? Ask me no questions, girl, and I'll tell you no lies, the woman said. Jenny said, and how much is it? Five shining shillings, said the woman. Five shining shillings. That was exactly the amount that had mother, her mother had given her to buy her green coat. She thought about it, but not for long. Deal, she said, as she put the five shillings into the woman's hand and the woman put the black opal around her neck. Well, she skipped up Patrick Street thinking that she was like the queen of Sheba herself. But then she met a neighbour of hers and her neighbour said, Well, how are you, Jenny? We haven't seen you in ages. Asher, I'm grand, Mrs Murphy. But you know, my mother is going to kill me. I was supposed to spend these five shining shillings and a coat for my sister's wedding. And didn't I buy this instead? Oh, my God, said Mrs Murphy. That's beautiful on you, she said. Look, I know you're good for it. And she took out five shillings and gave it to her. A five shilling note. Thanks very much, Mrs Murphy. 
Sure, I know where you live, girl. I know you're good friends. So you can pay me back a bit at a time. Already, Black Awful was beginning to bring her good luck. She was so happy. She went home and her mother was a little bit worried about how easy she had come by the Black Opal. But Jenny was a good girl and deserved a little bit of luck. Over time, however, her mother saw that Jenny's face was getting pinched. There was a boy that she liked. His name was Jimmy. She met him at the dance and she wished on her black opal that he would ask her to dance. And he did. And for a while, she took him out. out they, in the old days, they would say they were walking out together. But she began to find things wrong with him. And soon she was on to a different boy and then a different boy. And it was the same at home. Before, if her mother said, oh, I can't afford an eye cloth for the table, she'd say something like, sure, that's all right, man. Your smile is what lifts our heart. But now she was finding fault with everything. For God's sake, ma'am, you think you paint the floor? Imagine having a concrete floor. Or, for God's sake, ma'am, potatoes again. Can you not just do something else? We're sick of potatoes, knowing full well that the purse was light in that house. Eventually, she started to look different. She got a line up above her eye. Her lips were pinched. She was no longer the beautiful girl that everybody wanted to smile at. And then her mother said, Jenny, I think I need to take it to the priest. She was sick of herself at this stage, so she decided that she would go. On the morning that they decided to go, there was a thick mist curling up from the river Lee. She turned right and walked into the thickening mist. As they got to the river Lee and turned left for St. Mary's Church, they were just about to mount the steps and go into the church itself. And she saw the old woman that had sold her the opal. That old woman said not one word to Jenny Brown. But the way she looked at her, the way she held her hand on her hip, made Jenny turn to her mother and say, I can't go in, ma'am. Her mother said, you won't go in. No, ma'am. I can't go in, she said. She made some lonely figure walking back up Shandon Street to their home. Jenny Brown died with that black opal around her neck. The priest said, will I take it off you? The mother said yes, because it brought her no luck. She put it into a little velvet pouch and buried it at the roots of the tree in their garden. If you ever find yourself in Cork City and you stand in front of the North Chapel, the North Cathedral, and you look up Cathedral Road, on the right hand side you'll see some houses with trees growing there. As you pass, if you feel a call, a call to stop and look at what is in the roots of those trees, will you dig up that black opal? Or will you run, run like hell to be free? <laughs> so that one was for Liz. She requested that story. So I'm going to, um, so anybody who wants to be on the official one, we're at the end of our duties, but I just don't want to leave. And I've seen that Alwyn has come in. And I think she's a brilliant story. And I'd love a story from Gail. And there's a few more people that might like to tell a story as well. So for those of you that want to hang on, you're very welcome. An amazing day, Maria. Oh, I love it. Sorry, I have amazing. to go. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thanks. You're an Amazon. You've backed me all the way. And I appreciate it so much. Thanks so much. You know, thanks, Maria. So, uh, go with joy, and I'll catch up with you tonight, Liz. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, now I'm going to mute everybody and I'm going to carry on with Alwyn. 
So muting, mute. And no, are you there, Alvin? I'm here. Very good. I don't know what's happening with our little um with our, our little camera. It's no longer going to the speaker. I can see you and I can see.